Welcome to the Forge Truth Podcast, where we are building great men as God defines greatness. Forge is a movement of men with a mission to help all men realize they're the deeply beloved, redeemed sons of the Most High God. I'm your producer, Zach, and I'm here to discuss the issues that affect men the most with our two hosts, Dr. Pete Allenson, lifelong pastor and leader of Forge, and Jason Quinones, Bishop of Core Faith Church in Oviedo, Florida. Men, welcome to the show. There it goes. Here we go. You ready for this? We're back at it, man. I'm yeah. ready. I'm ready. I'm ready, ready as I'll ever be. That's right. And whether we're ready or not, Zach's going to force us to do this. So. Yeah, That's right. You got to do it no matter what. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. so I'm glad are. you're ready. That's yeah. a relief. <laughs> yeah. Today, uh, we do have a special guest in the Forge studio today. That's so. right. That's right. So, Pete, why don't you uh, introduce them? <laughs> it's good to have Mark Stanikus with us today. And Mark is a elder at Orangewood Church in uh, Maitland. He's also a father, a husband, grandfather, I think. Not yet, no, Not no, yet. no. Wow, I'm paying for that. I want you to tell us all about that, but um, but also the director, leader of uh, Jobs Partnership in Orlando. And we're here to talk about that today, and it's going to be going to be great. But, Mark, good to have you. Glad you're here. Tell us about your, tell us about your family first and then what you did. Uh, what line of work were you in before you started Jobs Partnership? Yeah, sure, Pete. Thanks for having me. And Jason, we're really glad to be here. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm a kind of a Orlando or Central Florida native. Um, I uh, moved here in 1972. Huh. Uh, my dad was in the military. We traveled around the world those first 12 years of life. And so this is home, uh, Central Florida. In fact, I went to high school not far from here at Lake Howell High School. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And so I'm a Lake yeah. Howell graduate and, um, and then went on to UCF and got a degree there. And while I was in college, I worked in the credit reporting industry. I was with Equifax. And, um, and then when I graduated from school, I ended up uh, going to Experian, what is now Experian. Uh, and um, so I spent about 17 years in the credit reporting business, wow. working with you know, financial institutions and providing them access to the national database and everything that goes with that. So yeah, that was my background. And, and then at 32, I met Christ. Mm. It was kind of a ah. crazy conversion experience for me. Um, uh, and uh, one that I know uh, my mom had been praying for for years ah. um, because I grew up Catholic and um, and she got saved during that kind of Pentecostal movement or charismatic movement that went through the Catholic Church yep. in the mid 70s. And uh, she started reading the Bible and became a Christian and and then started praying for all of us, and it worked. And um, so I eventually came to Christ, and that was at 32. Wow. So Big change. Were you already married by then? No, thank God. <laughs> 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 because I would have made, I, I, I had the potential to make a lot of bad choices mm -hmm. prior to that, mm -hmm. trust me. And so I met Julie, um, and we married in 1996. Wow. And so we got a chance to start started the right way, wow. which was really yeah. exciting. And so we've been married since 96. So what is that? It's not, we're coming up on 28 years this year. Fantastic. And uh, we have two children. My daughter, Rachel, is um, uh, 25, and she's living and working now in Nashville after graduating from school. And uh, and my son, Ryan, is a junior in college. So mm. um, uh, life is good with um, two great kids. And um, yeah. And we've wow. been at Orangewood, of course, for a long time. So, yeah. yeah. Well, that's great. That's yeah. great. Fantastic. I, You know, we're all family men here around this table. And our listeners, we've got a lot of guys with a lot of kids uh, all over the place. So uh, stage of life. And work is crucial to what we do. Um, so how did, how did you get from working in the credit industry to, to start jobs partnership. What happened there? Yeah, it's, it's really a fascinating story. And, um, uh, I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that, you know, as, as God got a hold of me in my life started kind of changing my thinking. Hmm. Um, and, um, you know, I think I had, um, a lot of, in what I call the new believer syndrome, you know, I was going to do everything for God, right? I, I was going to solve all the world's problems. And um, and I thought, you know, initially that meant, you know, maybe I needed to go work at a church, right? Mm. And so I did spend two years on the staff at Northland Church. Mm. Um, and um, that was a lot of fun. But it was through that um, time at Northland that I got connected or I was introduced to Jacob Stewart at the Orlando Regional Chamber of Commerce. Mm. 
um, and he um, had just gotten a big grant from the state of Florida. It was a workforce innovation grant uh, from the state. And at the time in 1999, uh, they were trying to figure out how to help folks that were on public assistance get back to work because mm -hmm. the laws had changed in this country. And so um, the state of Florida had asked the chamber to help them connect the business community mm -hmm. to uh, the publicly funded workforce system mm -hmm. and the welfare system. And, and Jacob was like, sure, we'll do that. We're happy to help you. We largest pro-business organization in the state of Florida. He said, but I know one thing, businesses are not going to hire people out of the goodness of their heart. Mm -hmm. They want trained workers ready to go. And um, who can help in that, you know, kind of close that gap? Because a lot of folks coming off of welfare didn't necessarily have the skill sets and may, many, of which, many of whom had never worked. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's when Jacob had the, the thought, well, what if we got the churches involved? as a safety net and a support system to folks that are trying to make this transition from welfare to work. Mm. And so that's how I got into the picture. I was introduced to him and I had a business background, uh, credit reporting business, and then two years on the staff of a church. And he said, hey, let's do this. Will you huh. join us and help us figure out how we could engage the churches uh, in the workforce development ecosystem as a partner. And so that, that's how it got started. And I got, um, and then he sent me to a conference in Washington, DC, uh, the summit on churches and welfare reform. And I signed up for a breakout session and met these guys from Raleigh, North Carolina, who had started this thing where churches and businesses work together to upskill men and women from underserved communities to get into full-time career path jobs. And I thought, oh my God, that's it. There it is. There it is. Like three days on the job and the Lord had clearly shown me what it was. And here we are 25 years later. Wow. Wow. I love, I love some of the terminology that I've never heard. Upskill, for instance. I just, I'm quick. I picked that up. <laughs> that is good. Well, okay. So, so unpack a little bit about how jobs partnership works, and then, um, and then we want to go back and forth about work because you know they say about pastors, they say pastors only work one day a week. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, have your people ever said that to you? Yeah, just one hour. I work one hour. One a hour week. a week. Yeah. 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 No, because you preach an hour. Exactly. So your service. Yeah, I do your 50, service. I, I give them the full hour. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I'm not throwing shade on any other, you know, pastors, but I give them the full hour. I love that. I, I, I got to work for my, I got to work for my pay, man. You do. You do. <laughs> oh man. Oh, that's good. I love, but you know, I, I do love like just hearing, hearing your heart and how you, how you made that transition into that. And I, and I love the thought where I hear the church doing more than just, and, and I say just, I hate saying just when I say the next thing, just preach the gospel, mm -hmm. right? Just teaching the Bible, but actually bringing the gospel, bringing the scriptures to life, right? And helping people on a practical level. So tell us a little bit more about what Jobs Partnership actually does and how the church and men in particular can partner with that. Yeah, I, I appreciate that, um, Jason, because I think that we can preach the gospel but we can show them the gospel, right? Right, and I think that's been something, you know, as a as a someone who came to faith later in life, um, I, I I became passionate around. I want to see the church as relevant. Yeah, you know, I feel like that's something that will draw people in if they if we're really meeting people where they're at, and you know, in a variety of different ways, right? If we can figure out how to do that then that's what's going to draw people into the kingdom. Yeah. And so, um, and that's really kind of at the heart of what we're doing at Jobs Partnership is how do we take the Bible and these principles in the scriptures, um, you know, from a theological perspective, we're talking about now the cultural mandate, right? right? In Genesis, like this, God created us to work. Yeah. But people don't understand that, right? They think work is a curse. And, and it's so fascinating in our training classes, we offer a 12-week training class that teaches men and women a biblical framework or a biblical understanding of work. 
mm. um, and what that means and how that applies to them. Mm. And so, um, you know, uh, when you begin to reorient your thinking around that understanding, it changes everything mm. because suddenly now it goes from work being a curse to work being a form of worship. Mm -hmm. How do I honor God with my life uh, in the context of work? He's giving me, he's given me these gifts and talents um, for a purpose to bring order out of chaos, right? Mm. And so when I do that and I use those gifts and talents to bring order uh, to my workplace, um, then I'm really truly honoring God and worshiping him because I'm using those gifts uh, to do that. Mm -hmm. And so it's really a powerful um, message that really frees people and releases people to do what they believe God's called them to do. Um, and they can do that anywhere. It doesn't matter what your job is. You're like, how do you honor God by using those gifts and doing it well and letting the world see that? And that's, that's a huge part of what we're doing. And we see the light bulb go off. Now, how does that work? Is it, it you you invite people to weekly sessions or? Yeah, so what the, it's called, we call it our LifeWorks training. Mm -hmm. And currently it's 12 weeks long. It meets one night a week for three hours. And it's called LifeWorks very intentionally because there's really kind of two components, if you will, of the training. Uh, the life portion is the biblically based content mm. that focuses on what we call soft skills. That's the workforce development term, you know, really kind of how you think and act on the job. And so it's principles for work, like healthy relationships at home and in the workplace, attitude, integrity, conflict resolution, mm. stewardship. Those are concepts that for many are, are new. And perhaps the one that's most significant is the whole concept of work itself, hmm. as I was talking about earlier. Uh, and that's when we see the light bulb go off. And so um, we bring in local pastors or business leaders who teach those uh, topics you know, from a biblical perspective. We've developed the content around that. Um, and then the work portion, the second portion of the evening is focused on career exploration and career planning. What we've learned is most people have never had any of that. And typically we'll just um, kind of bounce around from job to job trying to figure it out. And then that's not really a good strategy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, the combination of soft skills and career exploration uh, really prepares them well. And really in ages past, a lot of times um, men and women got their jobs through the family network, you know, Smith, Tanner, Taylor, as last names illustrated the work, Miller, you know, <clears throat> of what they did. But um, yeah, so so what you're saying is that, boy, I, I wish I'd had a whole core group of people helping me process this kind of a thing as a yeah, young man too. That's right, Pete. I mean, I think, you know, um, you know, well, look what's going on in, in our country, right? The, you know, you see a lot of broken families. Mm -hmm. The divorce rate has really <laughs> taken a toll. And then there's just a lot of single parents. I mean, there's a lot of single parent families that are struggling to survive. Um, personally, that's been a real soft spot in my heart, knowing my sister was a single mom. And I saw what she went through. And she had resources and education, and it was still really hard. Mm. And so, um, yeah, so to really uh, kind of step into a person's life and help them with these skills is significant, especially when you talk about entering kind of the entry-level workforce and folks that are living um, in, a lot, in our underserved communities, under-resourced communities, who don't have access to opportunity for a variety of reasons. Mm. Um, it's a real game changer for them. Now, how do you as a white guy have that kind of uh, concern? How did you, I mean, you know, and I want to say this, I, I when you told your story briefly, I thought this is so cool because it really, from from coming to Christ and then um, being in the workforce and then growing in Christ and then moving to the church and then it came it came together. You really illustrate, I think, a lot of young men need to see, and young women too, but young men need to see the calling, the sense of calling, how God used your story to draw you into this mission. 
And so, in, in a sense, when I say, how do you as a white guy, how do you understand what goes on in those communities? Well, my quick answer to my own question is, because you've engaged. Exactly. You've built relationships. Yeah, I think there's kind of probably a couple of things that happen in my life, my, on my journey. You know, being a, in the military, my dad was in the military. Ah. So I grew up in a military family and we traveled around the world. My first 12 years of life, we lived in, um, you know, several different places, including Italy for four years. Mm. So I was immersed in the culture and had to, my friends were Italian. We had to learn the language and, you know, it was pretty crazy. Um, and then um, I think the second thing that had an influence on me was in my early years as a Christian at Northland, um, there was such a focus on missions, mm -hmm. both local and international. And I got, I got real involved with the missions committee. And so I took several trips. I went to South America. I went to Vietnam. Um, so I was in several different places where I was out of my comfort zone. Mm. I was, I had to adjust and meet people that weren't like me. I was in China three times, uh, you know, so I was really challenged to really um, connect and with people that weren't like me. And um, and I, I had a good start at that growing up in the military and yep. living abroad. Mm -hmm. And so I think that really shaped my, and I've always been curious about people. I love people and I'm curious about them and their traditions and their, you know, so I think that served me well as You're well. You're interested in people. I yeah. love that. Yeah. That's great. So who does so who does um, jobs partnerships serve? Like, what is there a demographic um, that you serve age wise, or you know, in particular? Yeah. Um, so it's typically over the last twenty five years, it's trended um, around and grouped around probably in the late twenties to probably mid thirties and forties and even beyond. Um, and I think. Uh, the best way to characterize that is, you know, folks that maybe have been struggling for probably five, 10 years after getting out of high school, you know, bouncing around and just not making it, you know, finally realizing, all right, I can't, I need help figuring this out. Mm. And I think that's kind of what's we've, what's, uh, they've been drawn to us because of that. Um, and so that's kind of the typical uh, age range of the folks that we're serving. But we're not limited to that, obviously. Um, and then, um, you know, I think what we, we've been doing some thinking around this um, and, you know, what characterizes uh, the folks that we're serving is that they're struggling to figure out how to move forward. Mm. They're stuck in life. Mm. They don't know what to do. They've tried what they know and it's not working. So, and there's, there's a sense of a lack of direction, a lack of purpose. And so I think that's the best way to describe that. And uh, I, I would suggest to you that that, that, that condition uh, doesn't discriminate. It kind of applies to lots of different people groups or subgroups, if you will, of our community. And I think um, that would be the best way to characterize who comes into the program. Yeah. And I, and I know that you said that you, you partner with churches, obviously. So where, where do your people generally come, come to you guys from? Is it, is it only through the churches or I know you talked about working with um, those who have been on welfare originally, that was kind of where it started. So how does, how, how do people get connected with jobs sure. partnership? Hey, great question. And so, yes, we do partner with churches uh, because uh, none of this works without the church, mm -hmm. right? The church, you know, has the truth. Yeah. And, um, and so um, uh, the churches are not only volunteers that lead or, and facilitate the program, but they're identifying people in their congregations or in their network of relationships, their ministry partners who are serving people that are out of work, struggling, stuck, no purpose, you know. Um, and so they're referring them into the program. But in addition, we're also partnered with lots of community-based organizations, government agencies who are serving low-income families, mm -hmm. low-income individuals, and they're referring people into the program as well. So, for instance, uh, we have a partnership with the Orlando Union Rescue Mission, mm -hmm. uh, men and women that are in transitional housing or precariously housed 
you know, they're coming into the program and they've actually incorporated our training as part of their service delivery. Great. great. Um, we partner with Orange County Public Schools, uh, the Head Start program at Orange County, uh, Community Action, um, any uh, nonprofit or government entity that's serving low income mm. Uh, individuals or faith-based groups that are serving low-income individuals, they're a prime candidate for the program. So, so what if I'm a, you know, a guy just, I'm, I'm, I'm in my twenties and I'm doing my job and I just, I just feel like there's more. I feel stuck. Could I sign up for jobs partnership and Absolutely. get into the program? Absolutely. And then a, then a local church, um, uh, they send people to come to these meetings to hang out. Yeah, let me let me explain that to you. A little. Um, so we've built um, a kind of a ministry framework that we're giving to the church and saying, okay, ah. here's how you do it. Okay, we're going to train you on how to run these classes. We've got the content, the curriculum, and so we'll if you will assemble a team of volunteers, huh. maybe twelve to fifteen people. Uh, who are mostly coaches there. So there's a real strong mentoring component um, or discipleship component of the program. Uh, and so this team of individuals then will run the 12 week training class once a week for three hours oh, okay. at their church, at their church and use your videos or yeah, we have video content or it's live instruction. We have a, a pool of instructors oh, that we call upon okay. to teach the content. Um, and then there's the mentoring that goes on at the tables. So, you know, it's like you're, you've got a small group of people that you're coaching uh, through the 12 week training process. Mm -hmm. And so um, the idea is that's a way for the church to mobilize and offer this training in their respective community. Yeah. Well, that that is very church friendly. That sounds like something any church could tap into, particularly those people that have that mercy focus to help people. That's right. Um, well, and I think what's been fun about it too for uh, for us is seeing you know, we we kind of do a little bit of matchmaking too at Jobs Partnership. Well, you know, because it's it's somewhat of a lift. I mean, it's a big lift, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Get fifteen volunteers. You know, twelve weeks long use the facility and we like to do food because, you know, food and, and the classes brings people together. Right. And so, um, uh, we've brought, we've been matchmaking. We bring several churches together to offer the classes, you know, so we see, we're seeing churches work together, you know, from different denominations and different cultures, um, which has really been a cool part of the process. And I think, really what God's been honoring in all this, because it's really a picture of the kingdom, right? You know, there's people from every nation and tribe volunteering and serving in the jobs partnership. Yeah. Yeah. So two, so two questions. So, so one, and I don't know if you, you have this number, but how many people have you seen personally maybe go through this program? And, um, and then the other one is, so the, the first what I'm hearing you talk about is the mentoring side of it, the development of character and and helping people to have a better understanding of what a biblical work ethic would be. Beyond that, what does Jobs Partnership do? Yeah, so there's been about 35, over 3,500 people that have graduated from the program. Mm. And um, our statistics are about 70% of them have either gotten a job, gone back to school, or done both. And so what's really beautiful is after 25 years of doing this, now we're starting to see the impact. We thought it was about getting people jobs. And what's happened is it's changed their families. And, and there's this generational impact that we're wow. seeing now. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, um, you know, the, the, a couple of examples, like I can think of a guy, you know, uh, he was a big drug dealer in town, right? I mean, people in the community know who know his name, right? And he got he came to Christ, uh, came through the class, uh, got a got a job paying, you know, 10 bucks an hour. This is back in the day. Um, and um, and now fast forward, he's married, three kids, started a church, has his own business, has his own flooring business, and his kids will never live the same way that he did. I love that. I mean, they're, <laughs> I you know, they're going to a private school, you know, Christian school. Um, he's their football coach. You know, I mean, this is a very different. He didn't grow up like that, but his kids will never know that lifestyle. 
This is what the gospel does. That's it right. It breaks sinful cycles that kill us. That's right. And and it brings new life. Right. Well, it, well, well. I think what I hear is that's holistic discipleship. Yeah. Wow. It's it's yeah. not. You know. Yeah. I mean, because I'm a firm guy. Like every time, probably any time on the podcast. Hey, what do we need to do? The first thing I'm going to say is we need to pray. But faith without works is dead. And and the thing is, sometimes people just don't know what to do, how to do it. And and I love the biblical focus on, you know, work is a gift from God. It's not, it's not a product of the curse. The difficulty of it is a product of the curse, but this is a gift and you yeah. honor God in this and teaching people how to do that. I mean, this is the gospel breaks the generational curses and creates, right? This creates the generational habits that we can pour into that next generation. So that is so awesome to hear. It is. Yeah. It is. And it really fits what we talk about at Forge. Right. And I talked about it this morning a little bit at Forge, you know, the five marks we talk about. Uh, identity, purpose, character, confidence, and legacy, and that, and that once we understand our identity in Christ, then what's our purpose? Well, purpose has three elements. We are leaders, we're worker providers, and warrior ambassadors of the gospel. And, 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 and work is not a curse. It's part of how we're made, but what we confuse is our identity and our purpose. So we have to keep our identity first, and then out of our identity, we get to lead, work, and advance the kingdom. And, and, and sounds like that's Jobs Partnership really helps put that into perspective. It is, we are made to work. Absolutely. Uh, it's a joy to work. It is. And feel the productivity of God working through us to do good things and tending the culture. Uh, all that. How can they, I, I, mean, I know you had another question, but how, what's a, what's a um, uh, contact information? How would somebody, if somebody wanted to get in touch with Jobs Partnership, jobspartnership.org.com? Yeah, jobspartnership.org okay. uh, is our website, and you, you'll you find out all about the program there, and, and our phone numbers are there and contact information. So absolutely. Good. I just wanted to say that a couple of times because that's that's crucial. Yeah, it's really important. Do you, are you looking for a new job, Bishop? You know, I think I'm going to go through this program, and I'm going to just reinvent myself. <laughs> 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 oh, no, no, you, you know, we don't want we don't want you to go through it because we don't want you to to leave what you're doing, and right. we don't want our producer Zach, who is top drawer uh, with us here at Forge. But um, I think this really is this is a, a key th thing. I like it. It's not just for people who are on welfare. No. Uh, that need to get to work. No. And I think that, you know, that's probably somewhat of a misnomer, you know, yeah. uh, because we got started there, you know, yeah. and we're not government funded. I mean, because awesome. it originally was started with some funding from the state of Florida. But yeah, um, it's over the course of time, obviously, we still do serve people that are coming off of public assistance. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's a it's a wide uh, variety of people and characterized by what I was saying earlier, stuck. No purpose, no direction, not sure how to move forward. That's really kind of the criteria. And a desire to change. Yeah. I think it, you know, if they're motivated to change, if they're just looking for another program, eh, it's not going to work. Um, but you asked another question, Jason, too, about some of the other things that we're doing. Um, so, yes, we do this training. But we're also connecting them, fo connecting folks to opportunity. I think there's two big ideas behind what we've learned in the last 25 years is one, that folks that are coming from difficult backgrounds or situations, kind of that, that uh, experience has really influenced the way they see the world, the way they think about the world, right? And it's not necessarily a positive view. And so I think, you know, one big idea, and that's why the Bible is such an integral part of our program is we're trying to change some of those negative attitudes and beliefs and kind of replace maybe some of the lies they believed with the truth mm -hmm. about, this, uh, you know, you may have made some mistakes, but your past doesn't determine your future. Mm -hmm. Right. And so um, there's forgiveness and healing that comes through Christ and um, you can move forward. So changing some negative attitudes and beliefs. And then secondly is, connecting folks to opportunity. I think a lot of people in our community don't have access to opportunity, and there's a lot of reasons why. 
Some of it's their own fault, but there's a lot of other things going on in our world that uh, create uh, barriers for them. And so what we've been able to do is kind of remove that, right? And introduce the people that come through our training to our network of partners, whether it's a church, if they're looking for a church home, or maybe they, then they need a job. That's where the business partners come in. Um, and so businesses right now are desperate for workers. Mm. I mean, I could, I'm so thrilled. I couldn't be happier, yeah, yeah. you know, that this is happening. And it was predicted that there would be a massive worker shortage in this country because of all the baby boomers that are retiring. It's happening hmm. and it'll be here for a long time. And so now is the window of opportunity to really lift people up, upskill them and then connect them to opportunity. And so that's a, a part of what we do. Or maybe they want to go back to school and get a technical uh, trade or a, a certification we can help them do that through our partnerships with Valencia and Seminole and uh, Orange Technical College, where they can earn a credential in six months or less and then be in a full-time job with benefits. Wow. So there's lots of resources that we're bringing to the table to surround them and give them access to those opportunities. Yeah, well, that is all fantastic. And uh, I'm really glad that Jobs Partnership is doing what it's doing for the community. And I want to thank you for coming on the show and telling us all about it. Oh, man. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I want to thank our listeners for listening in at home to the Forge Truth podcast. If you have any questions or comments, you want to join the conversation about what we talked about today, you can email us at forge at forgetruth.com. If you're interested in learning more about the Forge movement, you can check out our website at forgetruth.com. We would love if you would help get the word out about our podcast by going to Apple Podcasts and leaving a five-star rating and review for the show. It goes a long way in helping more people find the show. And we're also now on YouTube with a video version of this podcast. So if you'd like to watch while you listen, <clears throat> you can search for us on YouTube as well. Thanks for listening. And Pete, will you lay down a challenge for our men today? Yeah, boy, I tell you, Mark, thank you for your ministry. And I, I guess I would say there's so much to say. And we, we have we, we, we've scratched the surface. So I'd say the challenge to our guys is um, listen to the Lord's calling in your life like Mark did. And, and look for those key areas where he brings you through experiences that shape your thinking about your future. But then also, if you feel stuck, uh, you have to understand that that's a feeling, but it's not a reality that has to exist. Um, jobspartnership.com or .org might be the place to get to and, and start that journey to get unstuck. Move ahead and glorify God and enjoy why he put you on this planet. Can I offer one other suggestion? Go ahead. Um, Go ahead. We'll, we'll for the men listening to this podcast, I mean, what a great opportunity. If your business is looking for workers, it's a great way for you to engage and yeah. hire someone. Or you could volunteer and coach some of the men and women that are in the program. So lots of ways to take a step, a first step, towards uh, doing what you just challenged them to do.